This is me tabbing 5k every day for a week. Tabbing is a British military term and it stands for Tactical Advance to Battle and is specifically designed to simulate military manoeuvres, often with heavy loads, whereas rucking is a term more commonly used by the US military. I'm not trying to join the army, I'm 44. It just feels nice to know that I'd be able to do that. Four months ago, I made a video about my fan dance challenge where I attempted the SAS selection challenge, but obviously the civilian version. If it wasn't evident from watching that video, I wasn't attempting to join the elite military. I have zero military experience, but what attracted me to the challenge, other than it looked and felt impossible, was the training. Completing, and probably more importantly, training for the fan dance taught me two things. I watched too many American boot camp style YouTubers as all of the videos about covering a long distance march wearing a really heavy backpack is not called rucking in this country, as I kept calling it in my videos. So this is my first attempt at a rucking march. The British Army call it tabbing and the Royal Marines call it yomping. And as I'm English, with huge amounts of respect for our serving military men and women, I must stop calling it rucking. I'm very sorry. Okay, last climb, last climb. I just need to come back and do it again. This is pretty tough, guys. This is pretty tough. I take my hats off to the SAS. And then the second thing I learned about tabbing is that it's really really hard i've already said that but i think it's worth mentioning twice as carrying 45 pounds or 20 kg of weight on my back when trying to cover any distance reminded me of when i first tried running to lose weight this is exactly how i felt and probably one of the reasons i enjoyed it so much <laughs> Now, one of the reasons I'm making this video is because I've spent far too much time recently staring at a screen, either editing videos or Zwifting. Ah, come on, come on, Ryan. And because it's winter here in the UK and I've been a wimp, I've chosen to keep active indoors on my indoor trainer rather than outside running. Well, well, no more I say. It's time to switch up the screen for blue skies and frozen muddy footpaths. Okay. <sighs> aim of today's run or march is a tab in the summer i completed the fan dance and i haven't done any tabbing or rucking or yomping as it's called route marching a long way with a heavy bergen today's bergen is 45 pounds however all that aside forget about that i've got no military history i got i'm not doing this because I'm training to join the army. I'm doing this because I've realized that rucking is a really, oh, I keep saying rucking. The reason why I'm tabbing, because it's a really good way to lose weight. I burn more calories running this distance than I would do without it. It's good strength training for the legs and it's really hard, like really hard. I will say one other thing, one, I know I'm losing the pace. Today's ruck, today's tab isn't about pace or speed or today's just about getting it done. This is the first time I've done it in months. That it's llamas. I invented this crazy little tabbing challenge this week because I want to feel something. <laughs> I want to feel something other than staring at screens. And llamas. And also because I have the festive 50 challenge as the fan dance organizers call it in just under a month where I have to run, shuffle and march 50 miles wearing a heavy Bergen between Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. I'll have eight days, including Christmas Day, to tab 50 miles. And when I was doing my research for the fan dance, I realised that the test for the British Army is a 10 mile ruck, 10 mile tab in under one hour, 50 minutes. So that's a 10 minute mile pace. You know, and if the apocalypse came and I needed to pack all my gear up and leg it across the British countryside, I could probably do it quicker than most people. That's a nice feeling, but I'm not going to get there if I keep doing a slow walk. So this week in prep for this tabbing challenge, I'm going to march 5k every day for a week. And then really excitingly, I get to end it at my favourite park run, where I'm going to try and run that park run wearing this 45 pound Bergen faster than I did two years ago when I ran my first ever park run when I was a lot heavier than I am now. Significantly heavier and significantly less fit 
than I am now. Mad. Why are you shouting? Quick! Can I be 32 minutes and 33 seconds? That's the challenge. The point of today's run is a 5k run. Just a 5k. I'm going to try it again tomorrow. I will add that this wasn't actually my first ever park run. I ran a few before I built up the guts to register my time after running it officially as I was too embarrassed with how slow I was running or walking them. Ridiculous I know, but in the interest of transparency, 32.33 was not my slowest and strangely, for some reason, my official second and third park run times were even slower, so above 34 minutes. But on paper, on paper, my first registered time was the time I have to be and that was 32. 33. I genuinely do not know if I can do it. That time feels really fast while carrying this much weight on my back, but it is a fun challenge. It gives me a training goal, gets me away from the computer screen and out of the house. So let's do this. This is me tabbing 5k every day for a week. I don't know if you can see that. So that's five over 5k, 42 minutes. I've got some work to do, guys. I've got some work to do. I'm about 2k from home, so I'm just going to run home and go again tomorrow. So on the first day of running with the backpack, I ran the 5k in just over 42 minutes. That's 10 minutes slower than the time I'm going to aim for at the end of this week. But on the bright side, I enjoyed it so much, I actually ended up covering nearly 7k instead of the 5k I had originally planned. The first thing I did was pack my backpack with the same survival equipment that I used for the fan dance. Even though I'm not marching over mountains in the Brecon Beacons this week, I just want to keep to the rules and make it as realistic as possible without it getting in the way of fun. This is a training challenge for the big one I've got coming up in Christmas. Now the bag contains spare clothes, waterproofs, a survival bivy, spare trail trainers, a first aid kit with hundreds and I mean hundreds of blister plasters. In fact the first aid kit is 90% blister plaster. I still have flashbacks from the damage I did to my feet during the fan dance. <laughs> Day two, and it turns out all new military boots are instruments of torture, even these new ones. I have two big old blisters, weirdly on the Achilles part of my lower leg, from the high ankle bits on the boots rubbing. I didn't feel it when marching the previous day, so I didn't stop to fix the problem, but I'm now definitely feeling it. Boots are on, bag is still packed from yesterday. I'm gonna do a 5K march. Um, I'm not gonna run it because I want to break these boots in. It's a properly grim day today. It's been raining all day. I mean, I say all day, it's 11 o'clock. As much as I don't mind getting wet when I'm out, I'm not leaving with it chucking it down. At the beginning, when I was putting my boots on, that I was just going to walk this. This was just going to be a, a brisk walk. And I just started running. I've got to be honest, I really enjoy it, so I feel really good doing it. I've got new boots, don't ask me what they are, I just bought ones online. I was googling, I was doom scrolling, just reading review after review, and in the end I just went, that one. Well the thing that attracted me to them, I never went like that, the thing that attracted me to them was review after review of these boots all said that they're really good for flexibility, they, but also good for active use, and they're not rigid which is what I want. Another aspect of this Christmassy challenge is that boots are a prerequisite according to the rules laid out by the ex-Special Forces organisers. Before I completed the fan dance back in the summer, I did send them an email of the first pair of hiking boots I bought from Decathlon and I got this response back. So they went straight back to the shop along with my pride. Just want to get this done. Today just a 5K. I'm going to do 5K every day for a week. I'm umming and ahhing, I'm going to say this out loud, because if I say it out loud then I might actually do it. But there's a park run this Saturday, which I am available for. I'm not working, which is very unusual for a Saturday. Uh, Tracy's given me the day off. I might rock up with this at the park run and see if running with other people, which makes me very competitive. When I say competitive, I don't want to beat the person next, I want to beat me, but running with someone makes me want to keep up with them. I might go there and see what I can achieve 
in a 5k carrying this. But I'll, at that point, I probably will be completely broken from doing these 5k's. as when I first started running. And believe it or not, I weighed more when I first attempted to do this, what I'm doing now, i.e. moving faster than a walk. And I'd have given my right arm to be able to run 5K at the pace that I'm doing it now. So I can't complain. But it does remind me of those early days, which is probably why I like it. I like the grind car, it's that smell. So as the wind and rain started to pick up, I was having more fun doing this than I originally expected. When I looked out the window in the morning and saw cold, wet and windy weather, the last thing I wanted to do was run 5K with the weight of an average seven year old on my back. It could be worse, I could be stuck on a computer in my office or even worse than that, stuck in a car in traffic. Absolutely soaked through, heavens opened. Of course they did. We're just coming up to the end of the 5k. I've got oh, 400 meters and I'm running it uphill. End of my day three 5k and I was getting slower. I was nearly 45 minutes. I'm done. Oh, I am pleased. That's done. I need to get these boots off. Christ, Tracy's gonna kill me check my bag to make sure the contents are dry, which I'm pretty sure they are. Reset, ready for tomorrow. So I haven't got to faff around. Yeah, good. See you tomorrow. And here we have it guys. Zero degrees today. Winter is finally just gonna get this done today. Now to head back. Good news is, heading back is all downhill. And while I ran up and down outside my house trying to get my Garmin watch to tick over 5K, I had tabbed my fastest time of the week so far, 38.53. Still not the sub 32 minutes I was quietly aiming for in my head or anywhere close to it if I'm honest, but it was a really good shuffle. One that 2022 Ryan would have been very, very proud of. So on day four, as I sat in sub-zero temperatures of my garage, plastering up my ever-increasing blisters and contemplating my life choices, I realized one thing. This festive 50 challenge in only a month is not gonna be as easy as I originally thought. But for now, I have one thing on my mind, beating that first park run PB. That's how cold it is this morning. Chilly, cold enough for two pair of boot laces. I'm not running it today. I'm just going out for a walk with the bag on. I'm looking forward to giving it a punt on Saturday. So today's Thursday and uh, I set a really good time yesterday. Yeah, that's a good feeling. It feels so good. Okay, that's today's march, walk, done. I enjoyed that. As much as I love running, I also love walking. All right, see you tomorrow. Okay, I'm at the halfway point. This is Friday. I'm turning around and heading back. So I will say these boots are starting to rub. So for tomorrow's run, I'm gonna have to bandage my heels up because um, they're not broken in. Day five, I was really, really starting to feel it, especially my heels because of these boots. I had to balance up destroying my feet permanently and putting myself out of action for the next week with training. We're just coming to the end now. The end of the 5K. Yeah, it's been a really nice, really nice walk. It's a really nice day. Chilly, winter sun. It's better than winter rain. And then for tomorrow's park run, which is the last uh, day of tabbing this week. I'm deciding whether I'm going to wear boots 
or trainers. Now I want to wear boots, however, I'm uh, uh, worried about getting obviously quite bad blisters and I don't want to have to rein it back in or start walking because I haven't broken the boots in. Okay, so I've just got back. Always a good sign when you take your boots off, which was a relief to take the boots off. It's always a good look when that's. So yeah, luckily it's really not as bad as it looks. I made the mistake of changing how I laced my boots up. I'd laced them up in a particular way and then I changed it how I did it today because I thought I was being clever and doing it in a better way. Turns out it moved, uh, the boots moved a lot more than they should have. So the question, am I gonna wear the boots tomorrow or am I gonna wear trainers? I'm wearing trainers because I would like to be able to operate this week. <laughs> As it stands, I'm gonna have to wait for my heels to heal before I do the boots again. Um, so yeah, that's really, really annoying. It's a proper grim day today. Let me just show you this. Weather forecast is rain. 95% chance of rain at 9 a.m. Okay, I'm here. Arrived. Five hundred and fifty fifth Park Run at Chelmsford. There's a lot of people for what is a rainy Saturday morning. 580 runners to be precise. This blows my mind. I'm a huge fan of park runs, but to see so many like-minded individuals braving the cold temperatures and rainy conditions to run 5K in a park, I love it. As the gun went off, or the race organizer quietly said three, two, one, go, that my pace was dictated by those in front of me. I always, and I mean always, blast off of a park run start line like a bat out of hell and blow up within the first kilometre. That's part of the fun, but not today. If I go too fast wearing this bag, then I don't think I'll ever be able to recover, but it turns out I didn't need to worry about that as it was so congested, it was so popular. I wanted to run faster, I just couldn't. As I passed through the viaduct and went through the first kilometer marker, I knew I had to pick up the pace. I now had a bit more space to run and needed to put my foot on the power. From this point on, speed and power was the name of the game. I had to beat 32, 33, and not once did I look at my watch. I ran the whole thing from how I felt. I will kick your ass if I could. I had completed the uphill section, uphill, and this section over grass that I was about to recover was downhill. This is where I can make time up, but only if I dig deep and push. It's a bit of downhill now, thank God. no idea of the time or pace I just focused on trying to ignore the pain in my shoulders and I kept pushing always 
always sprint for a finish line, even if you're wearing a really heavy backpack and you just want the pain to end. Thank you. Well done, you too. And I finished. I was so pleased with my effort that I completely forgot to hit stop on my watch for ages afterwards. So even when I did finish, I had no idea of the time I had run it in. Hello, you need my barcode, don't you? Yes. I did, I did have it ready, there you go. Lovely. Thank you. It wasn't until after I received the official Parkrun email that I knew I had done it. I had managed to complete, I had managed to complete this 5k park run while carrying 45 pounds on my back in exactly 31 minutes and 51 seconds. Sub 32 minutes. Not only had I smashed my first ever official park run time from two years ago, but I was tantalizingly close to tabbing a sub 30 minute park run time. I remember it took me years to be able to run a sub 30 minute park run. And now I might have it in me to do it wearing this on my back. I will say now that I'm off the train and walking home, uh, I am absolutely over the moon with that challenge. I didn't expect to run it anywhere near as fast as that, if I'm honest. Also, I was quite close to getting the sub 30, which has now made me want to go back and try again. That feeling might pass when I take it off and I realize how much my shoulders are hurting. But I'm nearly home now, I'm gonna have a shower and something to eat. I started this week's challenge because I wanted to feel more and spend less time on my computer and in front of my screen. Oh. I felt loads, mainly because of my feet once again being destroyed, but that's okay. I've started the process of breaking in the boots. Once my feet are healed, then I'll keep marching in them in the vain hope that when Christmas Eve comes and the festive 50 challenge starts, these boots will feel like a comfy pair of slippers. But for now, I had a lot of fun this week. That can't be a bad result after only a week's back breaking, feet destroying work. Thank you for watching this video. See you in next week's video. Oh, it kills your shoulders. It really does. I'm really cold now, so I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna get these trainers off. Faster.